Shauna Sparks with Emerge Real Estate Champions and I'm here on behalf of the 43019 Magazine and today I'm meeting with Margaret Ann Rule, who is the 2022 recipient of the Ohio State Granger of the Year Award, which is absolutely impressive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for meeting with me and I am looking forward to um, learning more about you and about the Grange. Perfect. I'm willing to talk. Awesome. <laughs> So, Margaret Ann, um, how long have you been a member of the Grange? Well, I know I've been a member of close to 50 years. Wow. I started, although actually longer than that, because I started as a junior, and those are people that are five years and older, and um, I'm quite a bit older than that. <laughs> <laughs> although my mom told me I can't control my age, so yeah, I'm 66 years old. And so I know I've been in Grange ever since I was a little tight. Right. And you said that your, your parents were in Grange and your grandparents. So you're third generation, correct? I am. That's fantastic. My, my grandparents helped build this Grange Hall that we're videotaping in. And um, my parents took after them. And so it's been one chain after another. That's great. And I'd like to say I have um, siblings that are involved but they all kind of drop, dropped out so yeah that's yeah at least you're keeping it afloat right i'm trying <laughs> <laughs> and you you mentioned the hall itself so we're actually on state route 95 in fredericktown so Outside of fredericktown. Yep, yep so how often do you guys meet here at this local chapter wayne grange meets here um the third friday of every month okay yeah. um with the exception of um i think we have a picnic or something that we'll have it elsewhere but um, normally we meet here every third Friday and meetings usually start at seven. Okay. So tell us a little bit about what, what Wayne Grange does for the community. Oh my gosh. We do a lot for the community. Um, our main fundraiser is, um, serving meals. Um, we do a township association quarterly. Um, we've done bowling banquets. We've done the Shriners. Um, pretty much whoever wants us to serve will, if it fits in our schedules, we uh, will serve a meal and we're very reasonably priced. Fantastic. So how many members do you think are in your chapter right now? Well, we have at Wayne Grange right around 40 people. Okay. Um, we would love to have more, just like any other organization. Um, but you know, I also understand the, the busyness of the families that it's hard to work in something like um, this organization but we do have young young people that belong to our Grange too so we have a wide variety of ages yeah because it's great like you said they have the junior Grange so people who want to be involved can still bring their children and they can be members as well exactly and start that second generation right off the bat exactly that's what we try to do right <laughs> fantastic so um, you've done other things like the Fredericktown Farmer's Market. Are you involved in that as we well? We do. In the summertime, they have a farmer's market in Fredericktown. And um, it's on the thir a Thursday, every Thursday from 4 to 7, from June to August, which is right between the school years. Right. So we get the, the moms that have kids in school can help us too. Um, we take baked goods in, and we take turns. I'm usually in charge of scheduling it. And I try to schedule everybody once a month so you don't get overwhelmed with baking stuff. Yeah, that's great. And we've done really well, um, you know, making money off of it. Of course, everything's donated. Okay. Uh, um, so we make everything is profit and we turn around and invest in the community. We um, give to Inner Church uh, is one of uh, our examples. Um, we've given to the Flying Horse Farms. We've given to um, Freedom Center. We've done the um, Winter uh, Sanctuary. So it, it's different places that we donate to, and it's voted on by the members. That's great. So you keep it all local. It comes from local people in the community. Yes. The decision of where the funds go to are decided by members, and then it stays within the community. Correct. And I heard that you guys are also a part of doing dictionaries for third graders. Is that right? We do. We've started that program a long time ago. Um, what we do is we give each student at Fredericktown uh, schools in the third grade 
we go in, we find out how many students there are. We order dictionaries for them. It's more than a dictionary because it's got um, it's got maps in there. Oh, and nice. it's got it's a wide variety. It's a it's it's a well rounded dictionary. That's great. Really and good. They can for use it clear through their their school years. That's awesome. And they have to leave it there at the school if they're thir during third grade. And then when they finish third grade, they get to take them home. So it's theirs to keep. Fantastic. That's great. So how do people get involved? If they wanted to come to a meeting or join the Grange or maybe donate to some of the different things, where would they go to find best information? Um, that's a good question. We're working on that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a Facebook okay. uh, page. Um, we're working on... Possibly our, our website needs updated. Um, we've had some people that came and, and left the grain, our Grange um, that worked on that. So that's one of our challenges for this year is keep that updated. Um, Jordan Miller is our um, president or master, whatever you want to call him, for Wayne Grange. I'm from the old school and, and the leader was always called the master. Okay. Um, but more uh, modern Grange has changed it to the president. People understand that better. Yeah. That he's the one that, that runs our, our meetings and he would be our first contact. That's fantastic. So how many organizations are within the state or groups or chapters? Not Grangers? Really yeah, Grangers, yes, <laughs> perfect. I, I, don't know, Rangers. I, I don't know how many Grangers there are. I believe there's 102 Granges. Wow. That are still active in the state of Ohio. That's impressive. It is. Um, not all still own their buildings. Um, there are five granges still active in Knox. Okay. I'm thinking it's five. It's four or five. Um, but only two of us own our buildings. Okay. So, yeah, there's five um, granges. And um, Middlebury Grange. Um, they folded several years ago, so they use our Grange Hall whenever they need to meet. Um, they meet different places, but um, if they need to have a place to meet, they, they will use this Grange Hall um, since they don't have one. That's great. And still working together even with the separate yeah, divisions. That's great. So, I mean, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of people, a lot of people involved, and yet out of all of those people, you are the recipient of the <laughs> Ohio State Granger of the Year Award. So how does that make you feel? Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm humbled to think they even thought about asking me to be the Granger of the Year. And then when they read my name, it was like, I, I was just, I, I was dumbfounded. I didn't know what to say, but it is quite an honor to, to be recognized for all the the hard work that you do to keep the Granges alive. Granges going downhill just just like every other organization that I belong to. You have to work hard at it. Yeah. And we're working hard to try to keep Grange alive. It's got a lot of history. And I was just thinking back the other day that I don't know if you ever watched Little House on the Prairie, mm -hmm. but in one of their episodes they were talking about the Grange. Oh really? And it was like, oh geez, this is really good. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's that's yes. amazing publicity there. It is. <laughs> and then um, one other thing Grange is noted for clear back in the day um, is to get rural mail delivery. If it hadn't been for the Grange, a lot of the rural area would not have gotten their mail delivered. That's really interesting. I did so, not know that. Huh. So those are that's just a few noteworthy things yeah. that Grange has done. That's great. So it's good too that you're changing over time, evolving at you know, obviously don't need help with the mail service now, right. but that was something that was a need before. And so now you're doing things like the farmer's market and dictionaries. And then it sounds like always evolving into depending on what the community needs, which is fantastic. Yeah. And, and we, we look out um, right now, we're looking at broadband. Okay. You know, there's a lot of areas that don't have broadband. Right. And that's one of the issues that we are working hard on trying to get everybody. I mean, it penalizes the people that don't have it. Yeah. And okay. that was the way with mail delivery. It penalized the people that didn't have it. Yep. And that's what Grange is pretty much about, is we're helping the rural people. We're the voice for them. That's fantastic. And that broadband project has to be a pretty big undertaking. It, oh, it is. It is. <laughs> I'm it, sure. Not just me working on it. 
Absolutely. I bet that's good that you have a crew helping out and um, everybody working together on that. So tell me a little bit about Margaret Ann. Like what, are, what aside from this service organization and some others that you're also involved in, um, what are some things that you like to do? And tell me a little bit about your family. Oh, goodness. Well, um, obviously I was raised in this area. Um, my mom and dad um, lived in a little town called Waterford, not very far from here. I have four sisters and a brother. Um, they all live around here in Knox County, but one. Okay. I have a sister that lives in Marion. Um, but other than that, um, then I have nieces and nephews. I'm not married. I don't have children. I do have a little dog that is the delight of my life. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I, I just, all my life I have been a, a public servant because I graduated from Fredericktown High School and I started to work for the city of Mount Vernon right away. And my boss decided to retire and I became the city auditor and that started my public life. Right. And so many people helped me along the way that now I feel I have to, I want to give back. And so my way of giving back is being involved in a lot of organizations and opportunities to help people. Well, we appreciate it being a member of this community and a graduate of Fredericktown. Um, I, I'm always seeing your name and seeing you in different places. So really appreciate everything that you're doing for our community and, um, and for Fredericktown specifically. So yes. fantastic. Thank you. It's my pleasure. So in addition to the um, community service organizations and being involved in the community, um, obviously you're an alumni of Fredericktown High School. Yes. So um, talk to me about the Hall of Honors. Okay. Um, they have a committee. Um, the Fredericktown Schools has a committee that looks at um, individuals that have done um, things to, to promote the community or done better themselves. And um, they ask us to come and talk to the students about, you know, we were ordinary people in school and talk about some of our struggles and stuff that we did going through school and then, you know, what we did with our lives afterwards. And it was called the Hall of Honor. And that's so um, great. One thing that I remember is that in sixth grade, I almost flunked out of school. Oh, goodness. Because I didn't like my teacher, and so I did not apply myself. And so that was one example of, you know, if I had, I would have had to have taken sixth grade again. Mm -hmm. And as soon as my parents told me that, it was like, oh, no, I don't want to do this again. So I started applying myself. And had I, you know, failed, I, I might have missed the opportunities that I had to be a public servant because everything is in certain timings right. certain timings um, means a lot and absolutely you know and, and and i didn't mention my faith but you know i have faith in god and and i know he put me where i was supposed to be yeah. when i was supposed to be yeah agreed so that was that was exciting to hear other uh, award people that got the uh, uh, hall of fame or hall of honor um, Oh, their struggles that they went through in school and you know how they came out and bettered themselves also. Yeah, it just goes to show that um, to be you know just a great human, you don't have to have lived a perfect life. You can have overcome struggles. We all overcome right. struggles. So exactly. um, it's good to kind of hear those other stories from other people, I'm sure, and, yes. and kind of relating that to yourself and then still all the wonderful things that you can do after you overcome those struggles. Right, and you don't have to. You don't have to have a bunch of trophies or. Right. Um, you just do. You just do God's work. Absolutely. That's so, great. Yeah. Thank you so much for meeting with me, and it was such an honor getting to know more about you personally, and then learning about the Grange and everything it does for our community and. I'm really thankful that I know you and being in some of these um, community service organizations with you is just so great. So I really appreciate everything that you do for our community and for Fredericktown and thanks for being you. Well, thank you for asking me to be interviewed. I'm honored to think that you even thought about me, but um, absolutely, this was great and, and I, 
I'm an open book. I talk to anybody. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome.